And uh, the reason I say that is the Fed is incompetent. Now, the Fed, what I mean by incompetent, they're outside. You know, they can't they can't save us. It's, it's gone too far. They've been printing money since 1971. And instead of fixing the problem, they just kept making the problem worse. So let me give you an idea how much a trillion is and why I'm saying the Fed is incompetent and dying. So a trillion dollars is a lot of money. And all you have to do today is hit a button. You know, you don't have to print it anymore. You just hit a button and say one trillion, two trillion. So if you spent a dollar every second, I don't know about you, but I don't I don't think you and I are gonna be around in thirty five thousand years. But I think they just printed three or four trillion dollars in the last few months. So they're out of control. They can't this problem. So if you think they can, you know, and I hope I'm wrong. I know some of you people out there say I'm, I'm a pessimist and all this, but let me tell you something. One dollar a minute or a second, I forget what it is. I'll probably check that out, but it's either a minute or a second. For 35,000 years is a long time, and it takes them less than a second to do it. That's how much they're printing. But I'd rather have the price of gold going up than your money going down. So if you're saving money, you know, I'll pray for you tonight because your savings are actually real money. In other words, if you work for it and you paid the taxes on that money you worked for, that's real legitimate money. Unfortunately, the, the Fed is printing trillions and they're going to pay you nothing for your savings. I mean, you know, when I was a kid, I got 15% on my savings. Today, you get nothing. So the Fed is screwing you. That's the term. So I study from young guys and, uh, and what I understand about Bitcoin is that it just had a halving. And a halving means they print less of it. At the same time Bitcoin is printing less, the Fed is printing trillions. Now, you know, they're, the Fed is making the U.S. dollar or any currency, the yen, the euro, the peso. I don't buy gold, silver, and Bitcoin to get rich. I just hate getting screwed by the Federal Reserve Bank of the Treasury. So if you want to keep saving money and putting it in the stock market, or power to you. But all that paper stuff is printed. And the CEOs of that, of the, the stock market company, they did a side deal with the Fed. So the Fed was loaning them billions of dollars for them to jack their stock price up. So the, the stock prices are at this artificial high and all mom and pop are watching their 401ks and IRAs and the stocks are this high. And the Fed keeps printing more money, keeps giving the CEOs Indirectly, because they can't do it directly. They do it through what's called SRVs, special something vehicle. It's criminals, what they're doing. And they give the CEOs the money and they pop the stock market. That's why we're in serious trouble. That's my opinion. I hope I'm wrong. I'd rather have gold, silver. And oil. We're, we're just disturbed that the Fed is doing insider trading. And he's been saying for years, and the Fed and things like this. I've been saying it. I call the Fed the Wizard of Oz, you know, and and the average person says, oh, don't fight the Fed. Don't fight the Fed. I'm going, my God, don't you guys know anything? And what we say is we are be, we be the Fed. We back our debt up with hard assets. So we're not floating out there with nothing. You know, so we have a lot of debt, but we all, we've always countered the debt with that hard assets. So anyway, we're going to talk about this thing called the Cantillon. When governments or central banks print money, it doesn't go to everyone in the population equally. At first, it goes to the insiders, the political insiders. It would be the individuals at the World Economic Forum. You know, they've got this whole big push for a great reset where they're calling COVID a quote-unquote opportunity. Those are their words, not mine. That's, that's you know, what Jane yeah. Fonda said. What, what's that? Jane Fonda said this is an opportunity. COVID is the best thing ever happened to you. Yeah, that's, that's their... now the left can get in all about the... Yeah, that's basically their push. But these are the insiders that are buddy-buddy with the people, the central bankers, who are printing the money. They're closest to it. So they get it, and it hasn't got out into the economy to create inflation in either consumer prices or assets. So their purchasing power, they get the maximum benefit from this money printing, where by the time it gets down to the average Joe, if it ever does, prices have gone up so much that their purchasing power is less than it was before they printed the money in the first place. Would you agree there's two things that happen? Is that when this, this is called corny capital? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and so corporatism. You get all this money, CEOs get it, they buy back the shares of their stock. Which is That's a right. Horrifying thing. But meanwhile, so the asset prices go up, yeah. and mom and pop or the homeless consumer price index. Yeah, that, that can happen. Or if they do buy assets, 
you know, they're buying at the top and the people selling are the insiders that had the money in the first place. They're selling, they're selling all the way up, right? So in, in my opinion, and I'm not saying that the, the quote unquote insiders that we talked about, those that group of people are actually doing this, but if you think about their incentive structure, they would be incentivized for the economy to do poorly and to, and for the economy to actually collapse. They would be incentivized to promote things such as negative interest rates. Because what that does is that destroys the banking system or the economy. The more the economy is destroyed, the more money printing the central banks will do. Therefore, the richer the insiders get. If you look at the Banking for All Act, that's basically where we have accounts with the Federal Reserve. If we, the people, all have accounts with the Fed, then there's really no need for the banking system. There, There is no banking system. There is only one central bank. That's it. And so if we kind of take it to its logical conclusion, if, if the Fed has a balance sheet where, where basically they can take an infinite haircut, what that means is if they, if the Fed loans you money and you don't pay it back, it doesn't matter. They don't have a profit and loss. So they can start to distribute money. I mean, you want to talk about the Canelon effect. They can start to distribute it not to whomever they want, but how they want. So instead of giving you a mortgage based on your credit score, for your ability to repay the loan, they can do it based on your social score. So well, if, if you're not you, part of... Did you wear your mask today? Do you have a exactly. vaccine shot? Exactly. Did you cross the street? Did That's you, right. Did you bow? I'm screwed. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> so the mask, the listen, they're, they're talking about a crypto dollar? Yeah, basically, it's like, it's like a, a digital... Thing? Yeah, it's a digital dollar. So let's think about this. We all have a bank account, we'll just say B of A, Wells Fargo, whatever. And you get your bank statements every single month and you reconcile that. with. So now if we had a bank account with the Fed, then the Federal Reserve or the government would see every single one of your transactions, especially if there was no cash whatsoever. So the amount of power that this would give them that's is central. basically that's unlimited. That's, that's really totalitarian. And communist. I think it's even worse. Yeah. I, I think the main thing, though, is we've got to figure out a way to limit the ability for the central planners to create more currency. That's what it's about. And if you look at the, the gold guys, the Bitcoin guys, we're all on the same team here. And that's limiting the, the central planners from creating all of those currency units that trickle down and, and play into the camp. Is it would also make it harder for the governments to go to war, right? Something we should all be in favor of. Why is that? Why would you? Because they can't print the money. So the oh, only way that they could, the yeah, the only way they could go to war is if they actually tax the citizens first. And so if we're not on board That's with them going to war, we're like, no, I'm not paying for that. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now let's continue. Do you want to know one thing about crypto? I made over 3000% in profit in a few of 50, 60, 70 in the traditional financial system and you probably will still be broke and you will be old. This is not a sexy combination as you can imagine. But the question is, how can you start in crypto and make these profits? Where do you invest? Where do you start? My name is Gunnar and I'm from Germany as you can hear and things are a little bit different in Germany. More about that later on. The fact is, there are lots of different cryptocurrencies. It's a gigantic universe where beginners and professionals get easily lost. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. There are seven key steps you need to follow to become successful in this market. You have to know them and if you fail one of them, it's literally impossible to succeed in this market. Just an example, one of the key points is your exchange and one of the biggest are for example Binance and Coinbase. These are trusted and well established exchanges but, and this is a big but, you won't find the super profitable coins on those exchanges. The unknown super profitable coins that get gigantic profits are not traded on those kind of exchanges. They are traded on much smaller insider platforms that are barely known. And I can tell you what those super secret exchanges are and why they are so profitable. And another super important thing are the right information sources. The point is, the internet is gigantic. There are hundreds and hundreds of YouTube channels, blogs, pages and much, much more. 
And there are also market makers and influencers. For example, Elon Musk, he is not a crypto guy. But the moment he recommended Dogecoin, it went through the roof. To the moon, so to say. But why did he recommend it? Where did he hear it from? He didn't hear it from newspapers. And believe me, he is listening to someone. But you have to know who and you have to react before he is reacting. This is really, really important. And these are only two of the seven steps you have to follow in order to be successful in crypto. And if you want to know all of these steps in much more detail, and if you want to have a comprehensive checklist, here's what you should do. There is a link below this video. Click on this link and you will get the opportunity to subscribe to my channel. Click on the link and you will see a video where I explain the next steps. So see you soon. Click on the link now. I'll see you there.